Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Martin Kremer joins me in studio to discuss a technical breakthrough that could hasten the widespread introduction of vehicles that run on platinum using fuel cells. Hi Martin. Hi Tracy. Could you shed some light on this development? Yes, it's a lot of pioneering work that's being done and the financing of it is coming from South Africa's platinum mine. So you can see that uh, a lot of technology has been rolled out by the Germans. We also see a lot of activity by the Japanese. But as far as this latest breakthrough is concerned, it is getting the hydrogen underpin ready at a commercial scale for the introduction of the fuel cell vehicle. And they have to move quite fast because, you know, the it's L versus P. It's lithium versus platinum. The lithium guys are ahead with their electric cars. And ironically, the person who's pushing it is, you know, uh, the, um, the man from Tesla, Elon Musk, who is a, a former Pretoria Boys High School pupil, you know, now hitting the high spots in the United States. For a long time, it seemed that, you know, the fuel cell, the platinum using fuel cell vehicle would get ahead of the game. For decades, we heard platinum companies in South Africa saying, you know, in the next five years, this will happen. We'll have fuel cells which are, are zero emission products, you know, that don't pollute at all. The byproduct is water, so it's just what the world needs at the moment. They would say in five years we'll have these, and then you'd get there five years later and say no, in five years, and that's how it went on. So it was something like a foxtrot, slow, slow. Now suddenly the tempo has changed, quick, quick. And hopefully it really speeds up, because I think that the Platinum Fraternity realized that they've got a superior product, but it's not sufficiently commercial at the moment because of the need for hydrogen to drive these fuel cells. You've got to get that hydrogen base in, and how are you going to store the hydrogen? So this wonderful thing here enables you to transport and store the hydrogen for long periods of time using existing infrastructure because it converts it into an oil look-alike and that is non-explosive. Now people always worry about hydrogen because you know they think of the Hindenburg that blew up in the United States and they think gee this is a very explosive material you know are we going to blow ourselves to pieces. With this sort of transport that uh, is non-explosive it suddenly puts that aside and you say well you know as long as this base is commercial we can almost get going. And we know that once that happens for vehicles, the demand on platinum will be huge. So who's ever in the seat of the platinum mining at that stage is going to do well. And it's, it's not only Anglo-American platinum, which has actually funded this German startup, which has come through with this great breakthrough. And it's also a shareholder there. But we see in South Africa, you know, there's a lot of activity from Impala Platinum, they uh, sent, um, you know, journalists out to, to Springs uh, recently to see how they were powering l um, forklift trucks, you know, using the fuel cell, and also how they had created a South African storage of the hydrogen, you know, and, and to, to ensure that it could be stored at lower pressure, because they don't want this to be stored at high pressure, which is also what the Germans have succeeded in doing, coming in commercially with this. The word commercial is crucial. That was part of the, the latest Anglo-American platinum uh, media release. The word commercial popped at you, out at you. And of course, that was put out by Andrew Hinckley, who's really moving and shaking the introduction and the pioneering of the fuel cell, which can also be used in stationary applications. So you could possibly have it in your kitchen you know, as a domestic power station that would be absolutely clean, zero emitting, uh, and the only byproduct is water. And what are the benefits of the system that has been introduced? Well, the great benefit now is that you can use existing infrastructure. You know, I can remember Cecil, um, the former CEO there, Peter Cox, you know, used to say, the platinum mining company is saying the fuel cells are going to come in. You know, what's going to happen to your fuel when we get up at the Sassel pumps? You know, um, we'll have a different vehicle. They might not want your fuel. You know, <laughs> he used to say, Balderdash. You know, all you need, and I, I, I think his 
technology still <laughs> has to be looked at. He says, look, we produce the petrol here from coal, so it's sulfur free. What you do is you just pull up at our pumps in the normal way. You fill up your car in the normal way, but you must have a, a, a reformer in your car that converts that fuel into hydrogen. That was his answer. And then, you know, the platinum mines and our coal mines can really benefit from all this because we'll be able to drive the vehicles of the world virtually with our technology. But now, along come the Germans and say, look, if we use hydrogen, and people are sort of convinced that it's going to be a hydrogen age that we enter into, you could use existing, presumably, tankers that uh, are mobile, as well as your infrastructure in the petrol station, to store the hydrogen in an oil-type form, a liquid-type form. So you wouldn't have to engage in such um, enormous expense. Now, you can see that Anglo-American Platinum has financed this to, a, to the tune of about $4 uh, million dollars to get this thing going. And they've also arranged a partnership between the German startup and a big distributor of hydrogen in the United States. And between the two, they could now end up with a couple of situations that are real live, where cars can pull up and, and, and you know, if they fuel cell cars, they can have their uh, fuel cells powered by this hydrogen. And of course, that fuel cell needs platinum. So you get the demand for platinum and you could start building up this demand for this vehicle, which has zero emission. I mean, it's all very well for the electric car fraternity, Tesla, to say, okay, you know, we, we're not emitting, this is an electric car, you know, there's no emission, but there is emission, because there's emission at the power station, where the coal is being burnt, or the oil is being burnt, and, and you are making use of that. Also, it takes more time to charge the battery in these electric vehicles than it does to put the hydrogen into the fuel cell car. So, so what we, are, and, the, and the fuel cell car is a greater range. It's almost like you just stay as you are and you get your fuel cell, but it's got zero emission. So the big fight now is that South Africans should be pushing the fuel cell electric vehicle, the FCEV, not the EV, <laughs> which we have already got here, which are some of our people are, are driving around and you know, they can recharge at uh, Melrose Arch, but it takes a long time. You know, you've got to leave your car there a long time, you don't want to leave your car like filling up with petrol over a long period of time. That's what, that's what happens. So this is a superior product. The South Africans should be going hammer and tongs for FCEV, not EV. And um, I think it's starting to move in that direction. The name of the company that developed the system is Hydrogenius Technologies. How is Amplats involved in the company? They are a shareholder in that company, which is very, very interesting. They provided the startup capital. So they have been, you know, monitoring this company, encouraging this company. And you can see that this German startup has worked wonders. It's uh, waved a sort of a magic wand over everything because it started funding this uh, company, I think, in the first tranche was in 2014. And we're already seeing a commercial result. So that's incredible. And not only uh, uh, was it uh, sort of launched, but it was launched amid the flurry of trumpets in Germany. You could see the Bavarian ministers there and professors and everybody from the university all watching this development because, of course, they need to compete with the, Ch uh, with the Japanese. The Japanese have already got a roadmap, a hydrogen roadmap. You know, they want to be completely uh, free of uh, carbon in, in, in their energy by 2040 and it's going to be a hydrogen economy, the hydrogen age. So South Africa should be working with all these forces. And, and you can see that, um, you know, the Minister of Science and Technology, Naledi Pando, she is smiling broadly these days because she, of course, went to Japan. She sat there and she looked at their hydrogen map. She's drawing now a, a fuel cell map <laughs> for South Africa. So we need to get this going because the window of opportunity is wide open to create hundreds of thousands of jobs and to appeal to the world that is looking for zero emission power 
not only your cars, but in the stationary power for your electricity, your lights. So it's the answer that the world is looking for. South Africans should be going hammer and tongs into this. I know that um, you know the minister is keen to try and incentivize mining companies, particularly because I mean, yeah, they mine the platinum. They should be encouraged to use that platinum in a fuel cell context on their mines. We know that we've had them doing it in locos and dozers. She wants to now incentivize this so that um, it makes it very worth their while to do this because then we can go through the hard yards in South Africa so that you know every forklift in the world will be driven by a fuel cell, silent, clean. That's what the world needs, you know? And, and, and every car in the world will be driven by a fuel cell using platinum. Otherwise, these lithium boys are going to get in first yeah, and uh, give us a hiding. And is this technology already in use? This technology is in use. You know, you've got cars driving around. I'm talking about the fuel cell technology, but the technology that they're putting in place now to store, that's also, you know, imminent. They've got it in a commercial situation. They will be able to store this hydrogen with their new system that uh, uses existing infrastructure. And they are they're holding hands with the one of the big distributors of hydrogen in the United States, and I think hydrogen uh, is consumed at the highest level in the United States. So it's a good place to be. Japanese also moving. They, I think there, there are millions of flats now that, that will be powered by fuel cells, dwellings in, in, in Japan. Because you know, they had the problem with nuclear energy. They had that Fukushima, which shook them. And uh, they don't like that sort of uh, nuclear fallout there. So they, they now know that nuclear is clean, but they are reluctant to move into that again. They want to move into the fuel cell, the hydrogen age, which they call it. And they have a roadmap to do so. And they say they will be fully in it and totally carbon neutral by 2040. And you've mentioned that this is a great opportunity for South Africa. What should the platinum industry be doing? The platinum industry should be doing what it's doing. But it, it should have done this decades ago. You know, the fellas like um, uh, Andrew Hinckley uh, and Terence Goodlace, they are flying the flag now. They are moving fast. You've got um, the, the Minister of Science and Technology in South Africa. You know, she's got uh, a, a big hydrogen organization that has got research going on in Cape Town. It's got research going on at universities. They have been working on this behind the scenes for a long time now. So th these platinum mining companies should start being the users as fast as they can. We know people are scared of hydrogen underground. They're scared of that explosive things. But they could start using it on surface until they're absolutely sure. But with this German breakthrough now and the storage breakthrough we have here, it's non-explosive. So, you know, you're getting to a point where y there will be no excuse for platinum miners not to use fuel cells because they've got to say, you know, we produce the platinum. You've got to have platinum in the fuel cell, but look at how it works. You can come and see it. A and they should be the, the um, show window for all this. And, and we can see that Terence Goodlace of Impala Platinum, you know, he's moving on it. He took journalists out there, all the media were there to see how his forklifts are moving around. Uh, his researchers came rushing around to all the journalists saying, you know, we've cracked the code storing this hydrogen uh, in lower temperature. They were very proud. And it's, um, you know, the universities around here that, that have been doing that. Now we see the Germans saying, hey, we've also cracked the code here and you can use existing infrastructure. So together, I think we're going to start expanding this base that makes the use of fuel cells possible and they need platinum and platinum needs demand and this could derive the demand. Thanks Martin. It's a great pleasure Tracy. That's it for today. Join us again next time for more news analysis on the mining industry.